Hello, welcome back for my second video today. Actually, if you're wondering why I'm wearing the same T-shirt, by the way, unbelievable gear. Um, I'm definitely gonna buy more of these when I can. But I just already shot the um, S1000 XR review today, so that'll be up hopefully soon. And today, now what we're gonna do is change the brake shoes. So what we have is we have two replacement springs and the brake shoes themselves. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm on my own today videoing. Big J had other things to be doing. So first, I'm gonna remove the actual, I already took out the pin from the, the support, the hub support. So gonna loosen out the spline, take off the brake support stuff. Um, and then what we're gonna do is actually just take out the spacer here, or wiggle it out if we can, and then move the wheel right off the splines for the drive shaft and back and hopefully that works only time will tell so it's a uh, 27 and yes since been home i get to use my dad's tool so it should be easier Boom. I really wish I had my own tools home. It'll make this uh, a little bit quicker. That should be loose enough now anyway. So, you shall see. Beautiful. Out. I'm gonna support this side on the block wood as well. There you go. Out comes the axle, which is actually in pretty good nick, all things told. Now we have to try to work the wheel out. So this is gonna require a little bit of uh, finagling and hopefully it don't break anything. There's the spacer, so the spacer has to come out. And then we should be able to just Quite simply take the wheel to the right with a bit of wiggling, take it off the spline and rotate it out. Excuse me, thank you. That all looks pretty good too, so now I'm just going to support it on these two blocks of wood so we don't touch the spline, which we'll regrease later. So we'll inspect the spline in a minute. But for now, there is our uh, brake shoes. So this is my workbench, by the way. Isn't it fantastic? So this is the brake shoe system. They didn't actually look too bad, but like you can see, they're actually kind of separating in places. So they did need to be replaced. And that looks pretty good in there too. So that, is as easy as, and yes, I have the bike jacked before anyone says. I have the bike jacked up in a pretty dodgy way, but such is life. So one thing I would suggest when you're doing this is to, um, to wear gloves because this was, these probably had asbestos in them when they were manufactured. So you can see the difference between the old and the new. I think the new ones look a lot nicer, purely from even the looks point of view. So I was just removing the old cotter pins here. I forgot to describe that for some reason, but that's what I was at. So that's the old springs out. Now we're gonna do is just basically copy and paste what we have here. Um, I am gonna go clean these off. So this one goes here, and this one goes here. I'm just line them up, just make sure it fits. Which it does. Great. I'm just gonna go give this a clean up off camera and put a bit of grease on it. I'll be back in a minute. Ah, I'll take the camera. This might go without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Do not use WD-40 or anything else to clean these up because you don't want that on your brake surface. 
it's probably obvious, but just in case. I'm going to use some engine degreasing uh, to give it a quick wipe. That'll do. Doesn't need to be very clean. So yeah, we'll go throw it back on now and hopefully... I'll probably need to get a different thing already to pull the springs back in place because they're pretty strong. I don't think my little spring puller thing is going to do the job. We'll see. So here we are. Going to pop these back on. This goes here. And our cotter pins. I checked. I don't have any new cotter pins, so I'm just going to have to reuse what I have. Good news. I lied. I found cotter pins, so I'm just going to take that one back out and put in new ones. I would always advise using new ones if you can find them. And or rob them from your dad. New cotter pins seem to be a little bit stronger. Which is probably a good thing. You might also notice my hands changed colour, and that's because I found better gloves in the garage, which I'm pretty certain were probably being hid hidden from me. So, Alright, so that's them done. Now we need to get in the springs. This is the bit that I was kind of dreading, to be honest. Sure, we'll see how it goes. Yes, first time. <laughs> that went better than I expected. And our other new spring. Yay! Okay, so there you go. New brake shoe assembly together. So all we did was we changed the two shoes here and here, the two springs, and we put two new cotter pins in it as well. They're nice and shiny. There's the old cotter pin. It wasn't in bad nick, but I prefer. I always prefer putting in new parts like those anyway. They're pretty much consumables in my books. Um, but we'll see. Those are the old brake shoes. I'm pretty certain these are original. Like I'm 90% certain they're original. You can see they were kind of starting to split. Hold on, take you up to the better light. To my mind, ah, oh, there you go. These are starting to split a bit. So it definitely wasn't going to fall off anytime soon or anything, but it's still, you know, better to put on new stuff. That's what I always say. Also, once again, and I'm not sponsored by these people, I just really like their stuff because it fits so well. 38 Ride Company, and the hat, and my bag. Go give them a look up their class. Okay, so I'm going to clean out the braking surface now. All I'm going to do is get that kind of degreaser. Uh, I'm going to bring this over, blow it out first, and then get the kind of degreaser and just degrease the kind of the, the braking surface. And then we're going to put the wheel back on after we grease up the spline. Much better. So now we're going to reseat the brake into the wheel. There you go. That's set in actually uh, really easily. Okay, so now what I want to do is re-grease this. So what you want to do as well is your hub support um, bracket. That's what locates it as well. So just use that, nice and simple, to locate everything. That's what we're at right now. Just putting this back on. Always make sure on old bikes that you're not cross-threading. So this is just to tighten up the rear axle. Slot that through there. Come around this side. You use, well, I'm using a breaker bar. You don't have to use a breaker bar, obviously. It's just what I'm using. Looks good to me. So now, lastly, we're just going to tighten up our pinch bolt. And then I'm going to throw on my helmet and we're going to go for a spin and test out this back brake. So there we go. That's the back brake done. I'm going to lower down the bike now and we'll just give it a quick test up and down the yard maybe. Um, and then we'll bring it for a spin down the road. Bit rough and ready maybe, but it worked, so what can you do? Um, my head is so sweaty. It's better than getting my top of my head burnt though, because I'm going bald. Right, I'm going to give this a kick down the yard and back, and I'll come back to you. Oh, you missed out on Luna. we got to get her. Where are you, Lou? 
Hey Lou. How are you? I want your dinner. I'll give you your dinner. Yeah, we're gonna get your dinner. Mmm. Back in a sec, I gotta gotta give the cat her dinner. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it might need a little bit more adjustment. I might tighten it up as I go, but I'll do that as I ride it. Um, because it's easy to adjust these, you literally just shove that forward a bit and tighten this boy in, and then that snaps into place like that. So that's you need that snapped into place, otherwise it can loosen. So just make sure that doesn't happen. Um, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like any follow-up stuff on this, let me know. I'm gonna throw the, the the Camara onto my helmet and shoot off down the road for a quick spin because it's a it's a nice evening so you'll probably see some of that footage after this hopefully you don't see me falling off because i've done a terrible job or something only time will tell so yeah if you've watched thanks for watching um make sure you hit the like button and subscribe it really helps me out it makes me feel good about myself and also these lads who i follow on youtube and um, the skid factory they're sound out the two of them i've talked to one of them on instagram i think one maybe two they don't really call out their names when they reply but they're gents and they do insane work on uh building up vehicles so they've done a, a bedford van that was powered by six straight six barra so highly recommend going watching them they're they're cool they're cool guys yeah until next time thanks very much for watching adios Also, I just started a blog, so look up thegrillabiker.wordpress.com and let me know if you like it. Uh, also, I should have podcasts coming soon, so if you'd like to be part of them, let me know. And yeah, thanks for watching.